Cylinder misfires are a major bummer, and they can cause rough riding, they can cause loss of fuel efficiency, loss of power, and a whole host of other issues. Today I'm going to go over the six most common reasons why you might be having a cylinder misfire, and also how to repair those. Now before we get going, there's a couple of things that I want to mention. This guide is going to work for pretty much all vehicles, but the vehicle that I'll be using is my personal F-150. It's a 2004 5.4 liter Triton engine. But again, this guide is going to work for pretty much all vehicles. If you have a check engine light, I recommend getting a scan tool or going to the auto parts store and having them scan it for you so you can see what codes you have. The codes P0300 and above are going to be cylinder misfires with the code P0300 meaning random or multiple, which is a little bit harder to diagnose. You're going to have to do it to each cylinder or the P0301, 2, etc. Those ones, that's going to tell you which cylinder is the offending cylinder. In my case, I have a P0301. Five. That means the fifth cylinder is my bad cylinder, so I'm going to be able to zoom in and focus on that cylinder as my offending one. The number one culprit of cylinder misfires is spark plugs. In this case, since I know which cylinder is misfiring, I'm going to focus in on that one and pull that one out and check out how my spark plug is looking. In my case, I don't have any spark plug wires, so what I need to do is unhook the coil. I'll just unscrew that and undo the plug off of there, and then I can pull the entire coil off. Then I can put my socket down in there, and then I can unscrew the spark plug. Now, here's one thing to note. F-150s in particular and a lot of Fords have a real problem getting the spark plugs out. It's super hard. In fact, when I was pulling mine out, I broke the swivel, the universal joint, and that was because I was being lazy. If you want to make sure that your spark plugs come out nice and easy, I recommend taking your gas down to about 10 gallons, then add in a can of sea foam or B12 chem tool or even like a knockoff sea foam. Put that into the gas tank and then run that through until you're almost empty. Once you've ran that through, before you take out the spark plugs, warm up your engine just a little bit, say five to 10 minutes. That'll just help the aluminum expand a little bit. This is particularly for aluminum engines. And you'll be able to take those spark plugs out a lot easier. Also, in mine, you actually have to take out to get to these back two left spark plugs. You have to take off the computer, which is super annoying, but you'll need to look up how your car is, depending on which ones you need to get to. Now that you have your spark plug out, we're going to do some visual inspection. In my case, they just look a little bit worn, and I'm going to replace them since I'm getting close to 200,000 miles. I don't think this is my problem, but it's about time to do it, and so I'm going to grab the OEM spark plugs, put them in there, and that should make me good for another 100,000 miles. I have a link down in the description to where you can find out some more information if your spark plug doesn't just look a little bit dirty or worn. If there's fouling or oil or other stuff, that's going to point to some other issues that's going to help you figure out why you're getting that cylinder misfire. If your spark plugs are looking good and you've replaced those, maybe driven the car for a little while and you still have that check engine light or still getting the misfires, the next thing is wires that typically go wrong. If you have spark plug wires, there's a good chance it's these. Now my truck, the F-150 with the 5.4 Triton, it does not have spark plug wires and I'm seeing those less and less in vehicles. I pulled this off of my Ranger uh, just to give you an idea and these typically only last around 60 to 70,000 miles so they are also consumable. What you want to do, especially if you have an offending cylinder, is check out the wire on that cylinder, see if there's any breaks, melts, kinks, things like that, that may mean that the wire isn't doing good. If you see that, I recommend just replacing it. And if it's been a long time, again, you may want to replace all your wires. To do a more thorough check of your spark plug wires, we're going to use a multimeter to check out if this is within spec. Now, spark plug wires need to be under 12,000 ohms per foot. This is a foot and a half, so we need to be under 18,000 ohms. We also need continuity to make sure that there's no short in it, and then we can probably assume that the spark plug wire is okay. To do that, just lay the spark plug wire out on the table, put your multimeter on the 20K or 200K setting, depending on how long your wire is, and then you're just gonna probe across that. Here you can see we're about 3.6, so we're well under that 18,000 kilo ohms, and so that's fine. Also, because we get a reading, we know that there's not a short. 
So if the spark plug wires are good, you could still have wiring issues. The most common issue is actually on these F-150s. The clip that you plug into the coil breaks. If you can just slip it off without having to pull the tab on the back, it's broken. On these particularly, the Ford vehicles, they break all the time. I actually broke two of them while I was checking the spark plugs. Ugh. Also, the one on my bad cylinder was already cracked um, or has missing this, and so they'll just slip off. Now, sometimes they hold on well, sometimes they come off real easy. Now, you can buy new ones. I do recommend getting some nicer, beefier ones that match what's in there. There's some real skinny wired ones on Amazon, and I wouldn't recommend those. I have a link down in the description to the OEM part, and also another part that I'm gonna be using because it's a little bit cheaper. Now you can just cut and either crimp and solder on new connectors, but also what's nice is, is you can pull off the front tab just using some pliers, and then you can use a little pin, push it in there, and then push the wire out. So take out those two wires and you've got a new connector. Do that to both your replacement and what's on your vehicle. Then you can just slide those into place, push on that little red thing, and you've got a switched out connector without having to mess with any of the wires. So I really do recommend this method. Now we need to check if signal is getting to the coil. You wanna grab your test light. I've already got mine hooked up to the ground on my vehicle. And we're gonna unplug that plug from the coil packs. Take that off and you're gonna probe in on the positive side. And then you wanna crank your vehicle a couple of times and see if this is lighting up. If it doesn't light up, it might be one of your other pins, so check each one. If none of those light up, then you know that it's upstream from there. Your coils aren't even getting a signal in there. So knowing that, you're gonna wanna probe probably at the computer or as high up as you can get. And then if it is firing there, you know you've got a short in your wiring. If not, then there's some sort of problem upstream in your computer. Now that we've checked out the wires, it's time to look at the coils and see if these are giving us the problem. Now the coils typically go bad a lot less than the spark plugs or the wires, but it isn't super uncommon to have one of these mess up. Now if you only have one cylinder and you know which one is looking bad, there's a super free, easy way to check out if it's the, what's giving you the problem. Just switch it between two cylinders. And if your check engine codes move to that new cylinder, then you know that it's the coil pack. If it's not and it stays on the same cylinder, then you know that it's something else that's going wrong. Now, if you wanna be a little bit more precise or maybe you're getting some really rare failures in your spark plug wires, a spark gap tester is really, really great. You just turn this to the voltage that corresponds to how far the arc is gonna jump. You plug this into the end of your coil if it'll go there. Sometimes you have to do this at the end of your spark plug. Um, and you'll be able to see, is the spark jumping sufficiently across? You should see a nice blue strong streak across there as it fires with the timing of the engine. If you don't see that, that means you're not getting enough spark and you probably have a bad coil. There is a slight chance though that it could be a spark plug wire. I haven't ever seen that, but I have heard of where the spark plug wire was dropped, uh, decaying a little bit. And so they were, you were losing a little bit. So you still got spark when it was close, but then as you pulled off, it was sucking away some of that voltage. So just be aware of that. There is a slight chance that it's not the coil. It could be the spark plug wire. I have a confession to make. I purchased a DG508 coil uh, to replace on the vehicle and it's the wrong one for my truck. I was dumb and Amazon said it was the right part, but it's not. So if you need a DG508 coil, let me know down in the comments what your vehicle is so I can make sure you actually need this one. How you diagnose that you know that you need a coil and not something out. And then I will send this off to whoever is the most worthy recipient of one DG508 coil. Now we wanna look at the injectors. I think this is the most rare on this list of things that would actually go wrong, but because it's so easy to check if it's going bad, I think it's worth doing now. And all you're gonna to need to do is listen. Now, if you have a mechanic stethoscope or a normal stethoscope, I definitely recommend using that, but you can get away with just using a screwdriver. I saw this on Chris Fix It a couple of years ago, and you can just jam this screwdriver up against the injector and then put your ear up against it, and you should be able to hear that injector clicking. And if you can hear that clicking, then you know that the injector is firing. 
Now, if you don't hear it going, what I recommend doing is getting out your test light, hooking that up like you did before, and then just seeing, is the injector getting the signal? If it is getting signal, then your injector's bad. If it's not getting signal, then you know upstream you have a problem, most likely in the wiring. Now we wanna look at compression. You're gonna need a compression tester. These aren't that expensive, and this is actually my second one, so I find that they're pretty useful, and I've used it a number of times. Now you are gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the right adapter for your spark plugs. The Fords have a really weird spark plug. If yours takes a 9 16th socket instead of the standard spark plug socket, then you're gonna need this adapter. And sadly, my kit and most of the kits that you can borrow like from the auto parts store doesn't have it. So I do have a link down in the description for one of these adapter sets that does come with the 16 by one and a half that those weird Ford spark plugs need. Now to use it, you wanna put on your adapter, whichever one matches up with your spark plugs, onto the end of your compression tester. You're gonna take out your spark plug and then you're just gonna twist the whole hose in there until the O-ring seats up. Then you wanna set it where you can see it or have someone else jump in the vehicle. And you wanna crank it, I would say generally it's around seven times, but you're gonna crank it until the pressure isn't building anymore. And that'll tell you what the pressure is of that cylinder. Now, if you really wanna do a good job, you wanna take the pressure of all of your cylinders and compare them to each other. If one of those cylinders is more than 10% different from the others, you've got a problem. Typically, it's gonna be low. Now, the most common problems that you're gonna see for giving low pressure, I would say number one is gonna be a blown head gasket. Now, there's some ways that you can see if you have a head gasket leak. You're gonna see bubbling in your radiator or you're gonna have a milky color in your oil. Um, and so there's a couple of different things. Again, on my website, I list that in the article that are gonna show that you have a blown head gasket. After that, I would say it's either the valves or the piston rings might have worn out. Uh, there's a couple of other things like broken stuff or timing is off and things like that, which is kind of a bummer. But if you do have low pressure, then you're gonna probably wanna go and start to diagnose down that range. And most of those are harder repairs to do. So I'm crossing my fingers for you that you don't have low pressure. Now I want to talk about vacuum leaks. It's a little bit rare that you might have a vacuum leak that's so localized that you're only getting a single cylinder misfire, but it does happen. Often I'll see more cylinders or a general P0300, but again, this is something that can cause a misfire because you're getting too much air into the cylinder and it's not combusting correctly. Now, by far the easiest way to find if there's a vacuum leak is to use a smoke machine. You just hook it up to the battery terminals and then hook it up to your compressed air and then you'll have smoke coming out of the end. I like to take off the hose off the brake booster and then stick my smoke into there and it'll go throughout all of the vacuum system and you should be able to see if you have a leak somewhere. Now I'm not gonna go into the details of how to fix that leak because it could be all sorts of different things. You could have a cracked hose, you could have uh, worn gaskets, things maybe just aren't connected properly, um, but this is a great way if you see smoke coming out of where there shouldn't be, where it should be sealed up tight in the vacuum system, then you should fix that leak. Actually, if you'd like to see how to make a smoke machine, let me know down in the comments and if there's enough uh, interest in that, maybe I'll make another smoke machine and show you how to do it. Now, if these didn't work for you, there's a couple of other things that it could be. You could have the cam or crank sensor um, has go gone bad or is going bad, so you could check that. You also could have low fuel pressure. That's something that a fuel pressure gauge you can check with. Also, your engine timing could be off. I think it's rare that you would see just a single cylinder misfiring, but again, that could be it. And then also you could just have bad gas um, uh, fuel for your vehicle. So maybe try a different place and get fuel there um, or put in those additives like we talked about earlier. For me, the connector was wiggling off intermittently and I also got a new coil because it had weak spark and that seems to have fixed the problem for me and the vehicle is running well. Now, if you're cruise control isn't working, check out this video here. I go over it just like I did here with a whole bunch of different ways why it might not be working and how to fix those. Thanks so much for watching and take care.